November is the month to explore Pearland's dining scene with Pearland Restaurant Weeks. From Boiling Dragon's famous dragon seafood fried rice to your new favorite chicken fried chicken at Magnolia Cajun Comfort, there's a Pearland restaurant to satisfy every palate. Support small and discover neighborhood gems in Pearland this fall with Pearland Restaurant Weeks running November 1st through the 30th. See the menus at visitpearland.com slash restaurantweeks and start planning your weekend today. Houston's biggest international and independent film festival is finally here. The 16th annual Houston Cinema Arts Festival runs through November 17th with over 40 unique film events, workshops, performances, and more. Don't miss the new documentary Dory Previn On My Way to Where, featuring a live performance of her songs and a workshop with producer and Rice alum Amy Hobby. Plus, check out the Cine Space showcase of short films made with NASA archival footage. Get your all-access passes for all the screenings, exclusive parties, and more at cinemahtx.org slash hcaf. Single tickets are available too. Today on CityCast Houston. A Houston area middle schooler has become one of the victims of a national wave of racist messages that many are considering hate crimes following Trump's presidential victory. And is the Houston Housing Authority responsible for some Houstonians actually losing their homes? Plus, Mayor John Whitmire has a new plan to tackle homelessness in Houston. ABC 13 reporter Shannon Ryan is here to give us the latest on that and more. It's Tuesday, November 12th. I'm Carly Ann Jones, filling in for host Raheel Ramzanali, and here's what Houston's talking about. Shannon, welcome back into CityCast Houston. I'm so happy to see you today. Thank you. I'm so happy to see you. You know, you guys are my favorite podcast, so I'm always so excited to be here. Oh, I love to hear that. Okay, so I have a little icebreaker for you. I have a question. So Grammy nominations have been revealed last week, and our hometown hero, Beyonce, received 11 nominations with her album, Cowboy Carter, which made her the most nominated artist in Grammy history with 99 total nominations. But if you remember a few months ago, when the Country Music Awards came around, she received zero nominations. She was shut out. People were kind of, you know, pissed off about it. Do you think it's time for Beyonce to officially be recognized by the country scene? Yes, I think it's time. We've seen artists in different genres make pivots. Um, so no, I think well-deserved with the Grammys and I hope that she continues to get all the awards that she deserves. I do think she's going to win some of these awards. A couple of her nominations were Album of the Year, Record of the Year, and Song of the Year. So we'll see how it goes, but I really feel like it's time. Like she is a country girl. Technically, she's from Texas. I mean, you know. She is. <laughs> I actually just had a friend visit and I told her that Beyonce lived here. And so that's <laughs> what we spent our day doing. We went to the third ward. We visited a house that her family lived in for like maybe two years when she was mm -hmm. a child. My friend wanted photos in front of it. Uh, there really <laughs> is no greater force, I think, than Beyonce. Yeah, especially in Houston. We love some Beyonce down here. And she takes pictures in front of that house too. So it's not it's not as okay, crazy as you right, think. Yeah, Beyonce I feel does better the same now. thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Shannon. So let's get into some news. And I want to start and say that trigger warning, um, this story may be hurtful for some listeners to hear. Um, but... We're about a week into Donald Trump's presidential victory, and it's starting to feel similar to the 2016 victory because hate speech has seemingly started to spread across America through text message. Even making its way to Houston at Humble ISD, there was a student who received two text messages. So this text message is going to be a little hard for me to read, but I want listeners to get the full effect of what exactly is going on. It read... Greetings, you have been selected to pick cotton at the nearest plantation. Be ready at 12 a.m. November 13th sharp with your belongings. Our executive slaves will come get you in a brown van and be prepared to be searched down once you enter the plantation. You are in plantation group A. That is absolutely awful. One of our reporters, uh, Luke Jones, also spoke with a woman who had received one of those text messages. And I, I remember the first time I heard those words, my, my jaw just just hit the floor. I mean, we, we've seen this before around elections where there is this rise in extremism. Um, and, and I just hope that it dies down soon. Mm -hmm. Completely unrelated because we do not know who sent those text messages, but we know that we're also seeing those, what, you know, what are being dubbed as hateful. I mean, they're just mm -hmm. really awful demonstrations at Texas state right now as well. 
Okay, Shannon, can you give us a recap of what exactly is going on at Texas State right now? Well, Carly, when you talk about this um, sort of rise in extremism that we're seeing, unfortunately, we've seen demonstrations at Texas State where protesters, if you want to call them that, have been holding up signs, uh, chanting, saying racist, misogynistic, homophobic things. We know that the president of Texas State has come out and condemned this. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but certainly just uh, not something anybody should be dealing with, but especially college students. Uh, one of our employees, her children go to Texas State, and she's been talking about how difficult it is for her to see them have to deal with that. So certainly my heart goes out to them there. Yeah, me too. It's it's disturbing to see, honestly. And as a person of color, it's just really like frightening, honestly, um, especially because it started happening like directly after Trump won the presidency. I mean, like the next day or maybe that night, even um, these text messages started sending out. And I saw them on Twitter and it's just like expanded. And now to see that it reached Houston um, and it happened at a middle school. This was at Westlake Middle School in Humble ISD. So it's like, not even high school students, these are younger than high school students that are receiving these messages. And Humble ISD basically said that they only are aware of one student receiving the messages, but the parents of the student who actually got the text message said that their daughter told them that there were other Latino and Black students that also received a similar message. So the FBI has seemingly got involved in the different states. Houston FBI haven't really said much about it, but in other states, the FBI has gotten involved and they said that they're encouraging people, you know, if they see any threats or um, if they're receiving these messages to let them know. But um, it's, yeah, it's just really hard for me to see that this is happening so quickly. And I really hope there's a change that comes or at least that Trump comes out and like, you know, says like, maybe we should stop doing this. Like, please condemn it. Like, that's what I'm hoping for at the bare minimum. Yeah. Nobody should have to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, Shannon. So I want to move on to your biggest story. What do you have this week? I think for the past couple weeks, I've been working on the HHA drama. That's the Houston Housing Authority. Mm -hmm. They are a federal entity, which is why there's a federal investigation right now. But they do all of the affordable housing within the city of Houston. So there's a federal probe that's looking into how contracts are awarded. We know that they've been on site at 800 Middle Street. That's a 400-unit affordable housing property. That is currently vacant because there were environmental concerns there that weren't addressed. So Mm -hmm. we know that that site sits next to an old city incinerator, which means the uh, ground is laden with toxic ash. And Houston has a lot of industrial contamination. It's not like it's unusual to redevelop an area that's contaminated, but there are strict guidelines um, for how you have to remediate that land. Okay, strict guidelines. Shannon, can you explain a little bit more like what these guidelines are. Could you give us a few examples, maybe? Sometimes you'll put like a a clay cap over it. You'll pack soil on top. Long story short, during construction, some of that ash was disturbed. The TCEQ put out different environmental violations. And Mm. uh, sources say HHA effectively just ignored them. We recently did an investigation. We found that that land was obtained for four times what the county appraised it for. Wait, what, four times the amount? Why is that exactly? Do you know? The reasons why are still something that we're researching. That being said, I've also spoken with some people involved directly in that deal. And their argument is that HCAT historically is known uh, for uh, undervaluing land. Uh, So that's also something that we're looking into. But again, that investigation opened a whole new can of worms. I've had HHA employees reaching out to me. I've also had HHA tenants or former tenants, people who are now saying that paperwork errors they believe that HHA made resulted in them becoming homeless. Now, those are cases we're still researching, but we know an audit recently came out kind of just saying that the housing authority struggled just across the board with all of its programs. Um, But it did say that they were making paperwork errors that were harming and at times displacing tenants. Wow. But they also recently got hacked. So they really just can't catch a break. Oh, wow. It sounds like it's a lot going on at the Houston Housing Authority. Something else I saw recently was that Amy Davis of KPRC2 did a story on the Housing Authority as well. And she was saying that 
this is a still developing story, but basically there are some employees who are being paid off essentially because they were either fired or they quit and they had to sign NDAs, but they were getting paid like a hundred thousand and ninety thousand dollars to keep quiet about whatever is going on up there. I'm just wondering like what's next with all of this. Right. Yeah, Amy Davis has been doing a great job on this. As for what's next, I mean, I think we're just going to have to see what comes out of this federal investigation. Mm -hmm. We know that the head of HHA has been placed on administrative leave. Yeah, it's definitely a story that we're going to be tuning in to watch and see how it develops, because this is definitely um, a lot going on. (laughs) And I'm interested to find out what is actually taking place. One thing I love about Houston is that it's full of amazing stories. Here's one that I just learned about. In 1940, a girl named Ruth Steinfeld and her family were deported from Germany to one of the first Nazi concentration camps in France. She and her sister managed to escape with the help of a rescue group and Ruth ended up making a life here in Houston. Now her portrait is part of a new exhibit called Facing Survival by David Casson. The exhibit memorializes over 24 survivors at Holocaust Museum Houston and they really make you think about the resiliency of the human spirit. Facing Survival is on view now through January 5th at Holocaust Museum Houston, and the museum is free on Thursdays from 2 to 5 p.m., and kids 18 and under and college students are always free at Holocaust Museum Houston. Learn more at hmh.org slash facing survival. Houston's original neighborhood, downtown is for everyone. And right now is the perfect time to start a new Saturday tradition with the Market Square Park Farmer's Market. Every Saturday until November 16th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., you can enjoy this great weather that we're having and walk the farmer's market like I do and check out all of the local growers and makers as they provide access to seasonally fresh and affordable fruit and vegetables plus meat proteins and prepared foods, as well as other household goods. The best part? The Market Square Park Farmer's Market is in collaboration with Central City Co-op, which is Houston's oldest organic sustainable food co-op. There are several parking options, and it is accessible by the Metro Rail, so you can easily get to it. You can also enjoy live music performances by local artists and other entertainment so the entire family can have fun. Learn more at downtownhouston.org. Downtown Houston, get energized and revived. All right, Shannon, let's get into some lightning round. Are you ready? I am. Okay, so we have new details in a tragic death of a Houston firefighter who died in the line of duty. Last week, Marcelo Garcia was one of the more than 100 firefighters who responded to a three-alarm fire in a warehouse in the greater East End. Sadly, Garcia died in the fire as a wall collapsed onto him. Um, And this story has been developing for a few days now, but you might have missed it because of all the election coverage that's been going on. But it turns out a woman allegedly started the fire. Her name is Yesenia Espinoza Mendez, and she's 38. She was charged with arson, bodily injury, or death, according to court records. And she was taken into custody this weekend, and now a judge granted her a $100,000 bond. It's not clear why she started this fire, but we do know that she's the mother of six children, and her family also told KHOU 11 that she suffers from mental health issues like depression. As for Garcia, he was a 10-year veteran firefighter, and this week our community will be honoring him. This evening, they will actually be doing a public viewing at the Forest Park Lawndale Funeral Home, and then there will be a public funeral service for Garcia Wednesday morning at a local Catholic church downtown. We'll have the details in our show notes. Um, This one was really hard. I have no clue and we have no clue exactly why the fire was set, but I want to give my um, condolences to the Garcia family at this time because I know that it's really hard to lose a loved one, especially so suddenly. He is definitely an honorable man here in Houston and we want to thank him for his service. Yeah, we certainly do. And I think also hearing that her family says she suffers uh, from mental health difficulties. I mean, it's just, it's a devastating story across Mm -hmm. the board. Yeah, for sure. 
Okay. So Shannon, I know that you're the City Hall reporter. Do you have a story for us? What's been going on with City Hall this week? I think for me, the biggest wild card over these past few weeks has been learning that Houston is rolling out a city-sanctioned homeless encampment. So for context, there were multiple residents of Magnolia Park making comments about a camping ban. Essentially, it was a a squatting ban because Mm -hmm. they moved the Greyhound bus stop to the east end. Neighbors there say that that has caused more issues with homelessness, with folks who take those buses sort of squatting around the station. And in the middle of this, the mayor mentioned that we're going to be soon seeing a city-sanctioned homeless encampment. And all the city hall reporters are like, wait a minute, (laughs) what's going on? We haven't heard of this. So I know that within the last week, they were initially planning to roll out what they were calling a comprehensive plan to tackle homelessness. And we were told that we would learn more then. That sort of got pushed back with everything we had happened in the past week Mm -hmm. between the HFD death between the election cycle. But it's super interesting. So a lot of shelters within our city have space that they're not utilizing because of funding. So they have beds that are currently empty. So I'm told that what they want to focus on first is making sure that the existing shelters that we do have have the funding necessary so they can up their capacity. They're really focused on wraparound services, support, but this city-sanctioned homeless encampment will sort of be seen as an intermediary step between transitioning folks into permanent housing who, for whatever reason, maybe because they struggle with addiction, with mental health challenges, do not want to be in an enclosed space. They need to be in an environment where they have fewer rules, where the barrier to entry is just low. Mm-hmm. So did you have any details on like what area that this might be in in Houston? Nothing's been released? No, we've asked the mayor and he's not disclosing the site at this time. The only thing that he will say is that it's, quote, someone else's property. We're just using that. Now, whether that means the county, whether it's private property, it's unclear, but we know that they are looking to utilize existing sites that they have. Okay. This will be something interesting to watch as well, because, you know, we do really well here in Houston with our homeless community. We've been, you know, ranked nationwide with how well we've been able to reduce homelessness. So I see this as another way to really just help our Houstonians. So this will be something great to see. Yeah, it's good news. And I know that they looked at other cities as models as well, like Mm -hmm. San Antonio, which again, also nationally ranked for their programs. So it's really cool to see them investing in this. Mm -hmm. Something else that's also exciting is that as we're recording this, we're waiting for the big reveal of the Michelin Star Guide. They'll be announcing their first ever Texas Guide. And of course, we want to know which Houston restaurants may be getting a star or if they missed any restaurants. So I can't wait till it's actually revealed. But I'm rooting for Grace's to get a star because if you know me and if you listen to this podcast, I am always talking about Grace's on Kirby. It is literally my favorite place to go here in Houston. So we'll be doing a show on this on Wednesday. It'll be a food roundup with our host, Raheel Ramzanali, and he'll be talking to Erica Chang from cron.com about, you know, what made it and what didn't make it. Shannon, do you have any restaurant specifically that you want to see on the guide? I feel like any of the restaurants that are up for the Michelin star, <laughs> I haven't personally been to. I'm actually mm-hmm. a vegan with celiacs. Super fun. Um, so, okay. <laughs> so like, I feel like most of the high-end dining I can't actually eat. Mm-hmm. But I know uh, one of my close friends, my colleague, Juliana Kearson, she just did a piece at Truth Barbecue because mm-hmm. they're in the running for a Michelin Ooh. star. And okay. she said that it is delicious. And that same friend who I actually took to see Beyonce's home, I then took to Truth Barbecue mm-hmm. because it came highly recommended. And she just fell into a meat coma. <laughs> Yeah, Truth Barbecue is a huge one down here. We've definitely talked about Truth on the show plenty of times, especially on our barbecue recommendation show that we had earlier this year, which I'll link in the show notes if you want to check out other barbecue recommendations. But yeah, Truth is a big one and I hope they get a star. I mean, I hope they bring as many stars to Houston as possible because we deserve it. We've been waiting way too long for this. (laughs) Yeah, we're a food city. Come on. Literally a food city. So I don't know why it took so long, but it's finally here. So definitely check out that episode dropping this week. The Museum of Fine Arts Houston presents Living with the Gods, Arts, Beliefs, and Peoples. To celebrate its centennial, the museum has organized a -a once-in-a-lifetime exhibition that features extraordinary objects made by artists to communicate with their gods. 
Living with the gods represents a vast array of religions and beliefs, with art created across cultures and across thousands of years. The 200 objects demonstrate the astonishing quality that artists have achieved when driven by passion and faith. Living with the Gods is on view from October 27th through January 20th, 2025. Visit mfah.org slash livingwiththegods to learn more. That's mfah.org slash livingwiththegods. Ryan Reynolds here for, I guess, my 100th Mint commercial. No, 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 don't, no, no, no. I mean, honestly, when I started this, I thought I'd only have to do like four of these. I mean, it's unlimited premium wireless for $15 a month. How are there still people paying two or three times that much? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be victim blaming here. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash save whenever you're ready. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. I want to get into some joyful moments. Shannon, do you have a moment of joy that you want to share this week? I do. So I was able to do a story on a 100-year-old World War II veteran, Chester Buck Sloan. His wife, Shirley, she's also a veteran. She served um, here in Texas during the Vietnam War. She served in the Air Force. I mean, it was just, it was an incredible story. It Mm -hmm. was a sad story. I mean, imagine that you're a teenager. The entire world is at war. I can't imagine how scary that would be. Mm -hmm. Fresh out of high school, you're drafted alongside virtually everyone else your age. You're immediately shipped overseas. You're thrust into violent hand-to-hand combat with kids your own age. A lot of your friends die. They're taken prisoner. So he wound up with some really nasty PTSD. He says when he came home, he went down a dark path. He was drinking. Um, But through faith, through family, you know, being able to relate to his wife, who's also a veteran, was a big deal. And through music, he says that he learned to cope in a healthier way. So he and his wife still play every Saturday night at the Buckshot Jamboree. Oh, wow. That is so beautiful. I really would love to go hear that. It's in East Houston, and they are just such a hoot. But he's written all these songs about his time in the service, and they're really beautiful, and they're just such fun people. And he has the craziest stories. He was telling me a story when we were sitting down about a young Polish boy who was showing up in the the ditches that they had dug each night, the foxholes, I'm not sure of the exact terminology, but you know, they had dug these holes and this young kid was showing up every night and they were like, hey kid, what's wrong with you? Why are you here? And he said, both my parents were killed. So they let him just start Mm. hanging out and the guy who was running his division had been a school teacher back at home. So when it was time for them to all go back, they said, hey, what are we going to do with little Joe? They put him in a duffel bag. It sounds like a movie scene. They cut out a hole so that he could breathe and they stuck him on one of their bunks and they smuggled him into the United States. Um, They said halfway through, like the higher ups found little Joe and they joked that they didn't turn the ship around because they knew that they were going to have a mutiny. And little Joe actually came here to Texas where he became a school teacher because the man who adopted him was a school teacher here. And he died two years ago which is just such an incredible and heartwarming story. And I also wish little Joe were still alive so that I could talk to him, but I'm going to try to track down his children and some of his students this week in honor of Veterans Day. Oh, wow. I love that story so much. I mean, I know many of us have veterans that are close to our hearts. I have one in my family as well. My uncle, William Britton, he passed away a couple years ago, but he was a veteran in the Vietnam War. And he was definitely one of the pillars in my life for sure, like, you know, helped me become the person I am today. So I'm grateful for him. And I definitely love hearing this story. This was super heartwarming and Yeah. Happy Veterans Day to all the veterans out there. We appreciate you and we love you. And I hope to hear the follow up. Also, some good news. There actually uh, there is a fundraiser right now going on to send Buck and Shirley back to Belgium for the 80th anniversary of the Battle of the Bulge. So Buck was wounded during that battle. He got a purple heart. Um, That's actually next month. So certainly worth looking into. Oh, wow. Yeah, we'll attach that in the show notes in case anybody wants to donate because that is a beautiful thing. I love that so much. Um, My moment of joy is our community event that is coming up. It will be a listener appreciation party on Wednesday, December 4th from 530 to 730 at St. Arnold's Brewing Company. It is going to be a fantastic event where you'll be able to meet the whole CityCast team. We'll have listeners and our beautiful and lovely contributors. You can RSVP for free at the link 
link in our show notes. And the first 25 people get a free complimentary drink at the door. So get there early. And we have a bunch of listeners signed up already. So that has me super pumped. I'm excited. I can't wait to meet everybody and see everybody's beautiful faces. So make sure to sign up in RSVP if you have not. Um, Shannon, I hope to see you there as well. Count me in. I'm all about it. I love that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shannon, for joining us today here at CityCast Houston. We had a lot of information in this show, but it was great to have you and talk to you. So thank you so much. Thank you. I always have so much fun with you guys. I appreciate you having me on. That was Shannon Ryan, City Hall reporter for ABC 13. You can catch up with all her coverage with the links in our show notes. Make sure to share this episode with three of your closest friends who love Houston to their core. And don't forget to sign up for our daily newsletter, Hey Houston, as well. While you're at it, give us a review and a rating wherever you listen to podcasts. We'll be back tomorrow to talk about the highly awaited unveiling of the Texas Michelin Guide. That will do it for today. Thank you for listening, and I hope you learned something new. I'm sorry, I totally zoned out because my recording stopped. Um, Oh, no, it's okay. (laughs)